Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Go Big or Go Home. I am Old Man Troy, joined by the singing youngster, Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Cunny on Twitter. Did uh, American Idol reach out to you yet, my friend? Not yet. Not yet. Um, America's Got Talent has, though. So the next season of America's Got Talent, I'll be uh, I'll be showing off my vocals and hopefully uh, doing some big things there. So yeah, a little, a little. One. I was gonna say a little kidding there, uh, not not to you know burst anyone's bubble, but a little sarcasm there. But like Troy, I think you were just about to get into. We do a weekend show. We do a number of weekend shows. Um, that go on a number of different radio stations across the country, actually, different states. Um, so we do that, and Troy, I guess you can you can plug those. Well, yeah, follow us on Twitter at Youngster Old Man. So last weekend, I was joking with the youngster before the show, called yeah. him Cowboy, and he's like, well, I could break out into a tune. And I said, don't right. tempt me. And then there it was, live on, live on the air. Yep. You bust it out into tune. You want to do it again or you want to give the no. folks a no, no, no. No, I I did it once. Uh, if you want to listen to it, <laughs> go go to Facebook, go to Twitter at Youngster Old Man. Uh I retweeted it at Kid Cunning. I'm sure Troy did as well at Troy Robert nine six seven. But our show handle that we do this show on at Youngster Old Man that posts all of our stuff on Twitter. Again, at Youngster Old Man, it's all one word. That thanks to Troy, really that account retweets all the shows that we do. Um, so it's not just Big Ten that we do. We do national stuff. We do Cleveland stuff, Pittsburgh stuff. We talk about a number of different things. So if you actually do love us, and we know you know, we know people listen to the show, a lot of you do, if you actually enjoy what you're hearing about and it's not just solely Big Ten-focused, uh, we do national stuff as well. So again, or check if you us just out want to hear the youngster sing. That, that as well, if you want to just you hear can, me like, sing. You can, like, turn it off after that. Just click on it, listen to the youngster sing, and say, good riddance. Yeah, there you go. It wasn't, wow, this it, wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, youngster. My wife cracked up, though. There you go. Because usually, usually when I edit, I have the headphones on, and, I'm like, it is dead quiet. Nobody can hear what I'm listening to. But mm-hmm. I, I told my wife, I said, I said, uh, the youngster did it again. And... <laughs> I said, you got you to gotta hear it. She just started cracking up. She thought it was the most <laughs> hilarious thing in the world. Not in a bad Hopefully way. Hopefully in a good way. Uh, I was going to say. Not in a good way. She hilarious. Just, she can't that was believe, <laughs> No, she can't believe how crazy we are sometimes, uh-huh. the things we talk about. But nothing more to talk about. Let's move into it. We got, I mean, it's, it's funny, Kevin. It's not the Big Ten as far as major sports, football, right. basketball, but it is busy. When it comes to yeah. spring sports, you've got lacrosse, you've got softball, you've got baseball. I mean, there's a lot there's going on in the Big Ten right now. Yeah, there's other sports, like there's track, there's tennis, there's golf. There's other sports. We don't literally get into every single D1 sport that, you know, the Big Ten teams participate in. Uh, that would, I mean, that would take us forever. And, again, we don't follow some of these sports as much as we do others. We admit we follow football and basketball. 30 times more than we follow other sports that the Big Ten participates in. But these are some other key sports that you can find on TV, like ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU. Um, these championship games are on, and you know, especially baseball, softball. They, these tournaments last a while, and you're getting, like, best of five, best of three series. So it's interesting. And obviously baseball, you know, softball is big in this country. So it's interesting stuff for the casual sports fan right now that it's like, well, now what? You know, basketball playoffs every every night, every other night, um, and then just baseball. <laughs> like I, that's basically it this time of year. Um, and baseball yep. is nothing right now, to be honest. And not right. you know, not taking away is 162 games. Mm-hmm. They're like a quarter of the way through the season. Yeah, I told you, baseball to me, I do not get fired up about baseball until after after the All Star break or the trade deadline, actually. They, they move the all. I mean, that All Star game can be in July. I really don't mm-hmm. get into baseball until that trade deadline, because at that time you're you're just over halfway usually. But no, some good stuff going on. I, I guess we'll start with lacrosse, Kevin, because we're down to uh, actually two Big Ten teams playing each other in the on the women's side. Yes, 
Um, we'll get into lacrosse. We'll get into baseball, softball, and then there's something else too that I want to touch on. Uh, Michigan's, you know, Michigan's men's basketball coaching search. Um, we we touched on that last week, and I want to touch on it again because there's some, you know, fans, media, everyone, former players, former, you know, everyone bringing up one name in particular. So Troy and I have a take on that for sure. But women's lacrosse, um, very quickly here, Maryland defeated Denver in the quarterfinals. Maryland was the number one overall seed. Uh, they won the title two years ago in women's lacrosse. They also won the title in men's lacrosse two years ago. Um, so we we had to do a little research yes or yesterday last week on the show um, to remember exactly which teams won exactly which years. Um, Maryland dominated the scene two years ago, and in women's lacrosse anyway, they're on to the semifinals, and they're meeting a fairly familiar opponent in Northwestern. So Maryland plays Northwestern. Um, that is May 24th, which is, I believe, Friday? Yes, Friday. Um, and then the championship for women's lacrosse is on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so Friday is the semifinal between Maryland and Northwestern. The other semifinal is North Carolina Boston College, uh, which I don't think is fairly um, – I, I guess Boston College can be good. I, I just don't remember Boston College ever being incredibly, insanely good at lacrosse. Um, but they are a northeastern school, so <laughs> I guess you're almost Big designated. Big 10, though, will be represented in the championship game. you got to love that. Another yeah. sport where the Big Ten is rolling into a championship. By the it's way, awesome. that uh, that championship game is in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> so uh, if Maryland gets to uh, play in it, they're going to be in this, their home state. Um, it's at Johns Hopkins University. It's not literally at Maryland, um, but it's in Baltimore, which is in Maryland. Again, that championship game is on Sunday. The semifinal between Maryland and Northwestern is on Friday. Um, unless you got anything else, Troy, I'll move on to men's lacrosse. No, nah, move on to the men. Penn State was the number one overall seed there, so Big Ten teams certainly have an opportunity to do some big things, and they are. Um, but moving on to the semifinals, Penn State did that. They beat Loyola, Maryland, uh, 21-14. So they moved on. They're going to play Yale in their semifinal. Um, and then Maryland... For the men's lacrosse, um, they were not supposed to beat Virginia, and they did not beat Virginia in their quarterfinal match. Um, they lost 13-12, to 12, so one goal. Uh, obviously, could have gone either way, but unfortunately, Maryland fell short there. Um, so for men's lacrosse, it's Penn State, Yale, Virginia, and Duke in the semifinals. Um, so Penn State, Yale, that's on ESPN2 on Saturday, and then the final is Monday. So... Women's lacrosse semifinals are on Friday, championship Sunday. For men's lacrosse, semifinals are on Saturday, final is on Monday. Um, that final also on ESPN2, these semifinal games on ESPN2. Um, so they're accessible for sure. Um, but, yeah, Penn State, number one overall team on the men's side, still alive with four left. And then Maryland, Northwestern on the women's side. Like you said, Troy, one of them is going to get through the championship game, which will be on ESPNU for the women. So, good stuff. And I did. I got a chance to catch a little of that Maryland Virginia game. Oh, oh yeah. I, and I, I said it last week uh, on the show. If you've never watched a lacrosse match, just tune in for a little bit. It's exciting. Yeah. Like I, my wife was was hounding me, like we got to go. Uh, hey, we got to go. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. And it's just it's so fast paced. I, yeah. I know. I guess some people say, well, it kind of resembles hockey on grass and, right. and i guess you can guess you can say that because it's very similar but it's very fast paced not a lot of break mm -hmm. in the action uh the scrums are great the face-offs are great i just yeah. enjoy watching it i mean right. i don't understand all the intrinsic rules of lacrosse but Me too. <laughs> as a casual fan to watch it especially right. that maryland virginia and it, it was a good game like very fast-paced. So, again, I'll, I'll say it two, two weeks in a row. If you've not had a chance to catch lacrosse, watch a game, uh, just tune in. Tune in to maybe the semifinal with Penn State or even the women's side. Uh, that, that game is quick, too. The women are just as talented, and they move the ball as, as quickly as the men, and they're fun to watch. So that's all I got. Let's move into where do you, where do you want to go, Big Ten baseball or softball? 
I think I'll do baseball because sophomore softball uh, will take a little more time. It's more interesting. Uh, baseball, <laughs> baseball, the NCAA tournament hasn't started yet. Um, the Big Ten tournament is about to start, though. That starts on Wednesday. All these games, um, I think literally every single one, yeah, every single game, um, every quarterfinal, semifinal, loser bracket, winner's bracket, championship game, it's all on BTN. Um, so the first round games are on Wednesday, like I said. Um, the number one ten on Direct TV. Six ten on Direct TV for all you people listening in. There you go. Indiana uh, is the number one team, and number two is Michigan. Number three, Illinois. Uh, four, Minnesota. Five, Nebraska. Six, Maryland. Seven, Ohio State, and eight, Iowa. Um, so, you know, to very quickly, India play, Indiana plays Iowa. One eight. 2-7 is Michigan, Ohio State, 3-6, Illinois, Maryland, 4-5 is Minnesota, Nebraska. Um, and that's it. You know, it surprises is not me. Really Iowa's at, at 8. Yeah. I, Iowa's usually a little higher in the conference. I'm, I think no. the last couple of years they've been higher, yeah, that we've done this show, and I think they've had, like, Major League Baseball prospects. Uh, I, I have no idea this year. But, yeah, I think you're right there, that Iowa's had good teams very recently. Yeah, I, I suppose it's kind of like a minor league system in the in the major leagues. Once it's depleted, mm-hmm. you got to rebuild it. Yeah, you know what happens. No Wisconsin Badgers in the Big Ten tournament, huh? No, no. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess realistically, they take the uh, top eight, and that's you know that's that's that because there are three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen teams. Um, so, yeah. And you're like I kind of like that, eight. though, Kevin, where Six you're eight. not guaranteed to play in a conference tournament. The, really, oh, I like it. Yeah. The top eight, like Maryland, um, it just broke out on tiebreakers. But, like, Iowa was 12-12, and 12, Ohio State 12-12, and 12, Maryland 12-12. and 12. Uh, those, those were your bottom three. And then, like, after that, Northwestern was 11-13 and 13 in conference. Rutgers nine and fourteen, and so on. Uh, so you only got teams that were five hundred or better. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I don't, you know, I, I I could go off on a long thing here, but I, I won't. But like the NCAA tournament for basketball, I mean these these teams in the Southern Conference that go nine and eighteen during the regular season, or nine and twenty two, and then they like pull off this miraculous you know, three-day stretch where they win the Southern Tournament, and that means they get to snub a team that went 15-1 and one in conference and represent their conference in the NCAA Tournament, which basically means you play in the first four, and then it's, you know, a crapshoot there as to who wins to actually get in the real tournament, I like to call it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily think that's right, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think the number one team should be it kind of like in basketball, actually, with the Big Ten, where you get a double buy. Um, yeah, I, I think that helps you. And I, I, I don't know. I, I understand. I, it's kind of like that whole participation thing, where it's like, oh, you're in eighth place out of eight teams in your league, little Johnny. You're gonna get a, you're gonna get tro- a trophy at the end of the year. You know, for these teams that finish, like I said, nine and twenty-two, or you know, Purdue baseball was twenty and thirty-four they get to go into the Big Ten tournament like everyone else and have a chance to make the NCAA tournament. It, it's cool in a way, but at the same time, I don't know, I, I kind of like that <laughs> only the good teams, the decent teams, the solid teams are rewarded. It's like that in professional sports. Not every team gets to make the playoffs. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, like you said, I could go off here for a little bit about the other sports and blah, 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 but we're not going to. Let's move into softball. Yeah. Uh, baseball, by the way, the selection show is Monday, May 27th, um, so that's this coming Monday, the most recent Monday um, that will be ensuing as you're listening to the show. Again, follow us on Twitter, at Youngster Old Man, for all the shows that Troy and I do. We tweet them, retweet them on our accounts, all that stuff. So any of these shows you want to listen to, uh, there's your place to go get them, at Youngster Old Man on Twitter. For softball, the NCAA tournament bracket was revealed, I believe, right after. Um, it might have been like the day after. I, I don't remember, a few days after. 
uh, last week's show, but they did regional stuff. Um, or did we know the regionals? We may have known the regionals. I think we did know the regionals. I think it had just come out that Sunday, and then we did the show Monday. Um, but I was, it was funny. Uh, my wife and I were walking around um, downtown around here, and I saw on one of the TVs in the restaurants, like I saw Wisconsin playing Oklahoma in soft, And I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Wisconsin oh, screwed Lord. because of because I remember on last week's show, like doing a little research, like Oklahoma had won like I don't know what it is, thirty-eight straight games, something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, where was it? I shoot. I wanted to. I'll bring it up here. Um, but Oklahoma did lose a game, and I think it was to Wisconsin, I believe. Let me see. I'm I'm gonna bring it up here. Um, in short, in that little regional, Oklahoma, yeah, Wisconsin did beat Oklahoma in one of these games. Unfortunately. Um, Oklahoma got the better of them eventually. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the first game of Sunday, uh, the 19th, we're recording this on the 20th on Monday, but yesterday, um, Wisconsin actually beat Oklahoma two to one. Um, I think that was, well, it had to have been the first time Oklahoma lost in, I don't know how many games. Um, so Wisconsin played them in the final quote unquote, uh, when both teams had one loss and Oklahoma won that game two to nothing. Um, so Wisconsin had a shot at pulling down arguably the most dominant team in softball history. <laughs> um, they did once, but they couldn't do it twice, unfortunately. Um, but Oklahoma advanced past Wisconsin. That, that would have made some news, um, for sure, because that, that was the number one overall team by a mile. And like I said, in terms of, re- they were like 47 and two or something going into the NCAA tournament. It was, it was like ridiculous. You see gaudy numbers, gaudy records in baseball and softball, uh, but not like 47-2. and two. That's absurd. So Wisconsin had a shot there. Um, but it's funny. I, I was looking at this. Um, we're on to super regional play. So in regionals, it's basically a double elimination thing. Um, you have to lose twice in order to actually be eliminated. Um, so these teams play each other a number of times, and Oklahoma won that Oklahoma region technically. Um, But I was looking at the other regions, and I think, yeah, literally every other, literally every other um, region has had the host team. So you get these little pods of four. Um, It's kind of like the NCAA tournament basketball. But the hosting school, like Oklahoma, hosted that regional. Um, They moved on. Like the number one overall seed moved on. Every single team that's hosted its regional has moved on. So theoretically, you're getting the top 16 seeds all hosting their regional. Um, and over the course of a little series tournament thing, all these teams are winning. <laughs> like there's literally been no upset in terms of who's gone through over a few-day stretch onto the Super Regional round. The only one that hasn't been completed is Michigan. Um, and Michigan hosted their regional. They're playing James Madison literally as we're talking right now. Did get rained out? Postponed due to weather, probably. Maybe, yeah. Because literally every other regional is done. Um, James Madison's up two to nothing in the seventh inning right now. So Michigan might actually be the first team to be upset, quote unquote. Um, as far as other Big Ten teams go, uh, Northwestern won their regional, so they moved on. They're the 16 seed, so unfortunately they play Oklahoma <laughs> in the super regional. Um, but Oklahoma has shown that they can be beat, thanks to Wisconsin. Um, so Northwestern will get a shot at taking down Oklahoma. Um, it's funny because Oklahoma is going to, you know, basically host their way up until the world and up until the women's college world series, which is being held in Oklahoma city. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma has got a nice little ride. Um, if they keep winning, which they're supposed to, but for other big 10 teams, uh, Northwestern moved on to super regionals. And I think, yeah, Minnesota moved on as well. Uh, They're the seven seed. Uh, So they're playing 10 seed at LSU. And these super regionals are best of three. So you're just playing each team, you know, up to a best of three. You win twice, you move on. Um, So those, uh, let me see if I can pull them up here. That's exactly to when these games are played. Um, It doesn't even show there. That's terrible. (laughs) That's terrible. Um, I'll bring it up, but 
Yeah, uh, Michigan, James Madison, that's the only one going on currently to see who advances to the Super Regional. I'll light for a second while I bring up schedules and whatnot. No, I mean, again, good representation by the Big Ten. Uh, I'm always impressed when there's representation in softball and baseball for the Big Ten. We talked about it last year. The reason being is they're kind of at a disadvantage being in the Big Ten. Not yeah. not talent wise, anything like that. It's just practice time. Practicing in a gym compared to, to outside like you are in the south, like Oklahoma, yeah. they can practice outside year round. They unless there's a tornado. Then then they can't. But <laughs> Yeah. The, I um, mean you, these... you you look just look at the weather. I mean those southern teams and those yeah. western teams, they can be outside twelve months out of the year. Big Ten, you're lucky if you can be outside six months out of the year. Because you got to remember, in the summer, Kevin, there, I mean, you, you can have unorganized team practice in the summer, but college isn't in session. The season isn't in session. So right. these players got to get together on their own. Yeah. So once school starts and you got your NCAA rules and regulations and practice times and blah, 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 but they can be out in November, December, if you're Oklahoma. And Northwestern, oh, they get to go to the turf room or their indoor practice facility. It is not the same as being outside on a real diamond. That's all i got to say. Yeah. Talked about lacrosse um, and how the Northeast just traditionally dominates that sport. Um, you, you have, you know, other power programs as well. But um, I <laughs> Just looking at the Northeast for, like, softball, for example, these 16 teams, 15 technically, that have advanced, um, I'm looking, and as far as, like, cold weather teams, there's literally Minnesota and Northwestern are the only two. Like, here, here's the other teams. Florida, ten, like, yeah. Here's the other teams. UCLA, Oklahoma State, Florida State. Just, just think of the weather. UCLA, Oklahoma State, Florida State, LSU, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, Texas, Arizona, Ole Miss, which is Mississippi, Kentucky, Washington, you could argue, hey, there's some rain there, and Oklahoma. The other two, the only two cold ones are Northwestern and Minnesota. There's not even like a Northeast represented at all. <laughs> so, you know, I, I give some credit to the Big Ten getting two out of 16, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I I don't think we're making real excuses here. I I think it's legitimate that, like Troy said, you're literally at a disadvantage in terms of practice time and games. I mean, you don't want to play softball when it's 27 degrees. <laughs> You'd rather play when it's 78, not 18. I mean, that, that's just reality. And you ask an 18-year-old kid, hey, you want to go up north and play for Northwestern when it's going to snow half the year? Or do you want to come down to Oklahoma where we have a power program and you're going to play 12 months out of the year if you want to? Gee, I don't know. Where am I going to go? I mean, it, you know, it's like top high school quarterbacks. Usually they pick West Coast, Pac-12, throw the ball over the field. Or the South or the East where it's warmer. You don't see top high school quarterbacks go to Ohio State usually. Or Michigan or Wisconsin or Iowa. You don't. You don't see them go to Boston College. You don't see them go to Pitt. You don't see them go to colder weather. You see some running backs. You see some linebackers. You see some linemen. Even top corners, I'm sure it's the same thing. You'd rather be in a league where you're going to be tested and you're going to have some action. You're going to go to the Pac-12. You're going to go to not even necessarily the SEC, even though you know Alabama, LSU, Florida, those schools always have great ones, but that's just due to, again, kind of somewhat practice time and being able to throw the ball 12 months out of the year. So it, it's just, it, it is different just based on geography, which I always think is interesting in sports. Um, but that's just me. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's interesting. I think it's cool that Northwestern and Minnesota have advanced. Hopefully Michigan can. We're on to, I think, the bottom of the seventh, and James Madison is up two to nothing still. Um, That'll so. be their last wrap at it. I think these games are only seven innings long. Yeah. Yep. 
Michigan was 45 and 12. James Madison was 50 and 8. But Michigan was the 15 seed. James Madison, you know, was not ranked, quote unquote, um, based on competition. I'm sure makes sense that Michigan is ranked and James Madison is not. Overall records don't mean anything. Well, that's a good uh, lead into Michigan. Yeah. There's a lot going on outside of softball. Mm-hmm. We had a co- coaching change, and that's where we want to kind of end the show today, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Michigan right. basketball. We talked. We talked about it last week. Not to. Sorry. Sorry. I keep cutting you off, Troy. Uh, last week we, we talked a little bit about John Beeline and how he's taking the Cleveland Cavaliers job, and we talked about how weird that was. And there was a live reaction of some NBA analyst. I forgot who it was. Um, but he read it on like the bottom line, um, on like ESPN or something. And like, literally there's video footage of him just being like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> that's, that's very odd, very weird. I don't get it. Makes no sense. Um, even if you're the Cavs, to be honest, like you have this super young team that's honestly bad because they're all super young. You lost LeBron. You have like Kevin Love and a bunch of young dudes. You're rebuilding, clearly, and that's fine. Like, the Bucks had to rebuild, and all these teams, 76ers, had to rebuild. Boston went through a rebuilding stage, um, and now they're all good. You know, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right now the Cavs are rebuilding, which is fine, but to hire a 60-some-year-old head coach in John Beeline, I mean, yeah, he's a good coach. Yeah, he might be able to do really good things, but – I don't know how long he's going to last, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so both Troy and I didn't really understand that. Um, but there is a name that has kind of surfaced. And I well, before you get names. into that, before you get into that, youngster, I just wanted to touch on your point about what, what you yeah. were saying. You brought up a good point last week that what else does Beeline have to accomplish other than winning the national championship? Yeah. He, I mean, he's won. He's won at the highest level. He's in his 60s. Maybe this is a swan song. This is it. He out, maybe he had a goal of always wanting to get to the NBA. It, and if you're listening to this show, just go back in the archives on the grueling truth and listen to last week's show. Kevin got a little more in-depth about it, but I wanted to bring it up, Kevin, because we talked about it last week. If it was his goal and he wanted to get into the NBA, great. I mean, the only other thing that he could accomplish at Michigan is to win the national championship. Yeah, he was a runner-up twice. Yep. Twice in like 13 He's been years. there. Yeah. And, and then, you know, for some Michigan fans, that wasn't good enough. They wanted to run him out of town. Well, now we'll, now we'll see how you like it because he left on his own terms. <laughs> yeah. I mean, remember, remember Kevin, when they lost, people wanted to fire, fire him. Can he win the big game? Who cares? I mean, some schools only dream of getting to the Final Four, let alone the championship twice. So it's just, you, you know how I am when fans react. I always want to fire coaches. You, you know that gets me all worked up. But, again, for him to do this doesn't make sense to me at whatsoever from the Cavaliers' standpoint, especially how young they are. But maybe that's why they wanted a college guy to relate to the young guys. They know this isn't going to be like a 10-year stint for Bielema. Uh So maybe it's enough to develop their skills and then bring in another veteran coach when these guys have two, three years of experience. Very well could be. But from his standpoint, I mean, all I can think is he had a goal of coaching in the NBA, and boom, he got his chance. Can't, can't uh, fault the guy for doing that. But let's move on now. Interesting name has come up for the Michigan job. Yeah. Um, as of an hour ago, there, there was an article written, a credible article written, about uh, Ward Manuel, the Michigan athletic director. He's basically entered his interview phase um, of who the next coach is going to be. Um, so it's, you know, basically, supposedly, down to four names here. Um, Ed Cooley, which for some may understand, may, may recognize Providence head coach. Uh, I, I think he's done a really good job at Providence the last, I don't even know how long it's been there. At least 10 years, it seems like, to me. Um, in my lifetime, I can't picture any other Providence coach, really, that I remember. <laughs> um, obviously, there's been some. Um, but Ed Cooley is the guy that I associate with Providence. And he, he's, been, he's done really well there. Um, I, I think that would be a 
quality hire for sure. Um, I, I mentioned last week, like Billy Donovan would be the guy I would go after. I know he's with the Thunder technically. That's the guy I would go after. Um, I, I don't think it has perfectly worked in Oklahoma City, and I don't think necessarily it would be a bad move for Billy Donovan to come back to college and go to Michigan, a place that has shown it can potentially win titles, uh, which Billy Donovan has done in Florida in the past. But outside of Ed Cooley, um, there are a couple of assistants that uh, Manuel is going to talk to. Uh, what were the names here? Luke Yaklich and Sadie Washington, two current Michigan assistants that are you know, in the mix. The fourth um, is Juwan Howard, who was part of the Fab Five, a uh, huge high school recruit, did that whole thing with the Fab Five, Michigan, you know, a number of years ago. Um, actually, when I was born in 91, uh, that's when that all started. So, you know, uh, certainly he played, what was it, 19, 20 years in the NBA. Um, he spent three, four years with the Heat to close out his career, and since 2013, he's been a Miami Heat assistant. Um, he, he, you know, again, he's, he's been there for a while, five, six years. Um, he knows the basketball world. He obviously is a smarter guy um, that is a professional, and he is, he is what, like 46, so he's you know technically younger, um, but he he knows the game of basketball. I, I don't question his knowledge, and I think it's good that he has been an assistant in the NBA for five, six years. Um, I think that means something. Um, I think that helps as opposed to these guys that, you know, I, I hear guys, uh, what's that big Boise State quarterback? Kellen Moore. It helps he, with like, X's and O's. Yeah. But Kellen Moore, I want to say quickly, um, he was a really good Boise State quarterback, went to the NFL, flamed out, and like a year later he's like a quarterback's coach. And it's just like, well, damn, that's <laughs> that's quick. Um, in the NFL, you know, with the Cowboys, that's like, that's that's odd. Not saying it can't work, but I think if you are just – an assistant for six years. And then it's like, okay, here's your coaching gig. And I don't think Jawan Howard, it's a ridiculous thing. All the fans, all the media love this. And that's why we're bringing it up is everyone is on board with this. Uh, Jalen Rose has said, yep, absolutely do this. Uh, Chris Weber, absolutely do this. Fantastic for the university. I just think Michigan of all schools, for whatever reason, football, especially, I think of this for, it's like, who's going to be the next Michigan head football coach? Well, it's got to be a Michigan guy. It has to be a Michigan man, understands Michigan. Like, does it really? Does it really have to be a Michigan man? Like, is Billy Donovan such a Florida man? I, I have no idea. I, I personally don't know. But these, these coaches that just dominate, is Gino Oriema a UConn man? I have no idea. Maybe he is. But... <laughs> Like Old man says, no job. way, wrong hire. Yeah. Wrong hire. Before taking, before taking those jobs, are those guys just such, oh, my God, I love the University of UConn. Oh, my God, I love, you know, Michigan. I love Ohio State. I love Washington. I love Boston College hockey. Like, you can hire someone from a different state. Like, that, that's okay. They can come in and do My well. first co- coaching job, youngster, was at a college named Upper Iowa University. Are you an Upper Iowa man, Troy? No. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> this this city literally had no stoplights in it. <laughs> it was about the job. It's a good right. job. I liked it. It was a good job. Good mm-hmm. opportunity for me. Went in as an assistant, got promoted to head coach. It, that that was the goal. That that was my goal there. I went in as an assistant. Wanted to get some experience. Great opportunity for that. It worked out in my favor that eventually it led to being the head coach there. But my point to this is just because he went to Michigan and just because he coached or, and played in the NBA, that's great. It's awesome. College coaching is totally different than the NBA. I mean, you have to – You and again – Maybe he could be a good coach, but he has no college experience. Right. And for anybody that's never recruited, 
I was scared beyond but Jesus, Kevin, the first time I went on a recruiting trip, ever. Ever. I, I really, literally, I didn't doubt myself, but I went to my first tournament, and I felt overwhelmed just looking around at all the other experienced coaches there. Like, I've never done this before. What am I, what am I going to say to these kids? What am I going to do? Well, right. until you've recruited, you don't know what you're doing. You can think, oh, I'm Jawan Howard. I'll go get the best players. No, it does not work that way. You have to be good at recruiting. There's already been kids. There's already been kids, Troy, that have decommitted from Michigan for next year, and they don't even know who the next head coach is going to be. They've already decommitted. They have a tie to that coach, and John Beeline has coached for 12, 13 years in Michigan. And that's the thing. When you recruit, when you recruit, you're absolutely right. When I changed schools, I had players that asked how they could transfer. <laughs> right. Because I recruited them, not the next coach. And you talk about, it's funny, and I bring it up because of what you said, got to be a Michigan man. These, these players are not Michigan players. They're beeline right. players. Yep. That, that's what they are. Now, people will stay, and they'll stay under the new coach, and it happens all the time. But. My, my whole thing with this, and I'm not saying he's not a good coach. I'm just saying he has no college coaching experience. He may right. know his X's and O's. He may relate to players. But if you don't have players, you're not going to win. And I'm sorry, Jawan Howard, your name recognition is not going to get it done in the recruiting world. It might get you in the door. It might. But you better be darn savvy. And if you've never recruited before, it takes time. You've got to hire good recruiters. But I will sit and debate with anybody that anybody thinks recruiting is easy. It is not. It, it is one of the toughest things in the world. I, I would rather I would rather go work straight commission sales selling encyclopedias than recruit. Recruiting is cutthroat. I mean, it is, and it takes a lot. You have to put so much time and energy into one player, and then you got to remember you've got a whole pool. You, you probably remember. I, it's almost you've got to juggle all of this, and you've got to give time to all of them. And until you're good at it, you could fall flat on your face. And is that what Michigan wants? You have to have somebody in my mind going into that job, Kevin, that has been in the college ranks, that has had success. Because Michigan has a good program. And now you're going to turn it over to a Michigan man? Uh, I just I don't get it. I, I just don't understand that. Oh, yeah, we're going to bring back a Fab Five guy just because he's a Michigan guy. I think it would be the wrong hire. I'm done babbling. What are your last thoughts on this? <laughs> I, I've got a few things. I, I think that for me personally, like I'm a, I'm a basketball guy, really, uh, when it comes down to it. And I think for me, like I, I could relate to a high school kid trying to pick a college and where to go for a college. And I think that like I could eventually become a decent college basketball recruiter I'm not saying, you know, I, I should be this recruiter for Duke and Kentucky. And I'm just, I just think that I would do well in it eventually. But, like, for anyone listening to the show that has a job, and if they promote you within your company and you have to do a couple new tasks, like for me, for what I do now is basically write about sports and get paid for it. But if you promote me, and say, okay, you don't only have to write about sports, you have to be an editor, and you have to oversee six different writers, and you have to put together basically a budget of what stories are going to be published when, and what should those stories be. You have to come up with topics. You have to direct these writers into where they're going to go to find certain information about this topic. Well, it, it's different. 
like I, I have done that before. It's been a number of years, but say I haven't done that before. Like I, I can know what I'm doing now, but if you promote me and you do, you say, okay, you don't only have to be a head coach as opposed to just an assistant. You have to go down to college and instead of 32 year olds, you're talking to 18 year olds, you're talking to 20 year olds and you have to recruit these kids. And then you have to coach these kids. You have to make promises. You have to go on the road to Louisiana and visit these players that you think will fit in your system. By the way, you've never been a head coach before. <laughs> but So you have to take on new things. And yes, maybe John Howard would be a good recruiter eventually and put together a good recruiting staff eventually. But I think that it takes time to get really good at anything. There's a saying that you need 10,000 hours in a given subject to become an expert at it. And that's obviously give or take, depending on the subject, depending on the person. But yeah, once you spend 10,000 hours doing something, you should be pretty damn good at it. Until that point, you, you can get better at it. Once you spend 10,000 hours doing something, then you, you know what you're doing. And Juwan Howard hasn't had 10,000 hours Coaching, being a head coach, doing recruiting, knowing all, all that stuff, it's just different. There's more red flags with it. If you have Ed Cooley, who has been the Providence head coach since 2011, which I just read, and I thought it's been longer than that, but he's only been at Providence since 2011. Okay, he's still been at Providence since 2011. He's still done this for nine years. Hey, go take over Michigan and do the same exact thing you were doing. You may have to recruit a few different type of guys, but at the end of the day, you have your system. You've coached D1 college basketball at the highest level. You know what you're doing. Here's a different program. Go do it again. <laughs> okay. That's a fairly easier, less red flag transition than an NBA assistant. Like I talked about this with uh, some NFL hires where it's like, this guy's never been a head coach before, period, in his life, let alone he's now the head coach of the Jets or the Titans or the Packers. It's like, okay, you've been an assistant, I guess, for like two years, three years in the NFL, but okay, I guess now you're just going to be a head coach. <laughs> like you, you haven't even been an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, let alone a head coach at the NFL level. That's just a very scary jump to make. So I, I don't know. I, I just think it takes time for some of these guys to, and, you know, people have to start somewhere. I get it. Um, and I'm sure Jawan Howard would love Michigan more than anything <laughs> as far as where to start off as a head coach. Uh, but I'm with you, Troy. I, I don't think that would be the number one hire, like everyone else is basically saying. So I'm skeptical with you, old man. Yeah, I mean, it's just at the end of the day, you look at, Michigan basketball, and of course, football is going to rule the roost. It's Michigan football. But basketball, that's nothing to, you know, to shun about. Michigan basketball is good. I mean, look yeah. at the Final Fours. Look at, look at the appearances in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they didn't win the national championship, but man, runner-up twice, that's nothing to cry about. Yeah, you want to win the big one, but two, two times. Two times he was runner-up. He's left that program, I mean, in really a good position. And yeah. now, like you said, there's, there's recruits that have decommitted, and that happens all the time when a coach leaves. It's going yeah. to. Uh, when, I, when I left, you know, yeah, players didn't want to go there anymore. Because, again, college recruiting, you, it is. The kid is going to that school. Yeah, you're going to have your kid. I've always wanted to play at Michigan. Okay, great. Right. That's an easy recruit. That's basically, yeah. okay, you're good enough. We want you. Yes, you'll fit my system. Come on over. But as I said before, the work, the time, the effort, the relationship building, the kid's going to play for the coach, not the school. I, I hate to say it that way, but, again, I I'm not just saying this like, oh, maybe that's what I think. I, I got to remind the listeners, I was there. I did it. I coached in college. I recruited in college. Kids? Yeah. You, Kevin, how many kids want to go play soccer at Upper Iowa University? 
Oh, I know. Well, I know dozens. <laughs> For yeah, sure. they're, they're all lining up. They're all lining up. They're, the phone's ringing off the hook. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it comes down to recruiting. What are you going to offer this kid? And, you know, when I talk to, talk to these kids, I, I gave them the plan. This is the plan. This is what I want to do. Yeah, you never heard of this school. This is, you know, this is where we're at. This is the history of the school. This is where we want to go. All these things. This is where I see you fitting in my system. That's what it's about. It's, it's not robotic. Like, oh, you go to any school and, oh, I'd want to go there because I want to go to Michigan. No, the coach has a style of play. How do I fit into that style of play? Now there's a new coach. Will I fit in this style of play? I'm not his guy. So, again, it, it's nothing to do with Juwan Howard's accomplishments, his resume, his coaching aptitude. I just think right now, Michigan's not rebuilding, Kevin. It would be different. Let's put it this way, and I, I'm always on the Rutgers bandwagon. It's not Rutgers. Yeah. It, it's not Rutgers. It's Michigan basketball. High quality program. You need to have a coach that can come in and not have to learn. A coach needs to come in that's been there, done that, knows what the hell they're doing, so they can get it done. Yeah. And I'm sure Juwan Howard has a lot of peers. But again, Kevin, we relate things to the average listener. Average listener out there, a job that you're new to. You got friends that have done that job before, you call them. They tell you how to do it. Okay, somebody's telling me how to do it. I'm not going to know how to do it until I do it. You can give me a manual on how to do something, but I still have to go do it. And if I've never yeah. done it before, I'm going to make mistakes. And again, I just see this going in the wrong direction. So it's Jawan Howard, the Michigan guy. Oh, we'll give him a longer leash. We'll give him a longer leash. Oh, he's new. That's BS. If I'm a fan, I want an experienced coach coming in there to direct this team because it's in a good place right now. I'm done. I can keep going on, youngster. Take over. If Nebraska can get Fred Hoiberg, who's like a top 10 college coach in the country, then Michigan should be able to get Ed Cooley or better. And I, I think Ed Cooley is really good. Um, I think Cooley's I think he good too, Kevin, but they can do better. Yeah, I think Michigan so Michigan basketball. It's in the yeah. Big Ten. And I'm not going to say just according to you and I, who are we? But we talked about it for the last two years. Big Ten basketball, comparative to the ACC, just as good, if not better. If not better, top to bottom. And we talked about it. The ACC, you take Pitt at the bottom of the ACC, put them in the Big Ten, they're going to struggle just as much, maybe even worse. Right. Because you've got teams that are 8, 9, and 10 in the Big Ten that can go out and beat one, two, or three. You don't have that in the ACC. No way. I mean, I, I shouldn't say no way. Very unlikely that Pitt is beating Duke. You saw when Michigan you State at, lose three games in a row to, you know, like Illinois and Iowa. and uh, It doesn't happen where North Carolina loses to three mediocre or bad ACC teams. Nope. It just doesn't happen. And that's because the conference – look what Rutgers did. Yeah. Rutgers – I mean, so, again, my point is Michigan can go out and land a really good coach. And I know there's, people say, well, there's not a lot of great coaches available. They don't need to be available. Target, make your list. Who would fit Michigan? Then make a phone call. Call the AD and say, hey, can I have permission to talk to your coach? Yes or no? Maybe they say no. Maybe they say yes. It's Michigan basketball. That's all I'm going to say. What else you got? I think that's it. I mean, like you uh, like said, we could go, you know, <laughs> talk about this longer. But, oh, yeah, well, this, yeah. This, this topic could lead off on the many tree branches. Oh, yeah. And I already went down a couple tree branches with Juwan Howard. Yeah. Supposedly this search could end this week, by the way. So 
Well, and unfortunately, play. Kevin, my gut's telling me it's going to be Jawan Howard. I think so, too. Because you, you look, okay, Harbaugh as the football coach, Harbaugh played there. Now, again, Harbaugh hiring, uh, that guy had the resume for it. I mean, he coached at Stanford and made them really good. <laughs> <laughs> and he coached in the NFL. Head coach. Head, right. head coach. Not assistant for a mediocre Miami Heat team. Right. That, that's what they are. They're mediocre. I mean, that's it. So I don't understand where all the hoopla is coming from for Jawan Howard. But unfortunately, Fab Five, baby. Telling me, what would you say? I said Fab Five, baby. That's what it's all about, the nostalgia. Yeah, is that going to be his coaching staff, the Fab Five? <laughs> I don't know if Kirk Weber is allowed to be back then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it just comes down to it's it's a college program. You don't have time in college. Again, it would be different if you're rebuilding, starting from scratch, and you're like, oh yeah, we'll give you we'll, we need a, we need a Michigan guy to rebuild this to where we were. No, no, you're already you're, you're already near the top of the mountain. Yeah, I mean you're not on top of the mountain, but you can see it. You're there. Yep. You're not on the bottom of the hill. So that, that's why, to me, it's just not the right hire. But my gut's telling me it's the way that they've went in the past to hiring coaches, former players. Yep. I mean, uh, unfortunately, and I don't think it'll be the right move, and then we can talk about it on this show, and I can rant some more. But yep. I got nothing else, Youngster. For all the listeners out there, thanks for listening in. Find us on Twitter at Youngster Old Man as a show handle. You can find us individually at Roy Robert 967 at Kid Tunny. Thanks for listening in. We'll get back at you next week. Same place, same time. Have a good day, everyone.